Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today I'm gonna to show you how to create realistic fire in Photoshop. Fire is in itself a light source, meaning that it's going to brighten things around it. So if you want this to look realistic, be sure to choose an image that actually has a light source where you wanna place the fire. After you have your image with the light source in it, all you have to do is find some stock photos or you can just download the ones that are included and composite them together. And that's exactly what we're gonna show you how to do right now in Photoshop. Here in Photoshop, we're gonna to go to File, down to Scripts, and to load files into a stack. The reason I'm gonna use this is it allows me to add multiple different images together. So I'm gonna go ahead and add all of our fire images together. You guys can download this on flurn.com, just follow the link down below. And we're just gonna hit OK here. Now, as you can see, it's just kind of bringing all of my images together, and here we have our stack of photos. So we have our main image with a light source already in it. This person just basically used a strobe or a flashlight to get that light source. You can see all this is from stock photography. So we're gonna go ahead and take this image all the way down to the very bottom, and then all of these other images above it, we're gonna change the blend mode. So we're gonna shift click all those images here, and we're gonna change the blend mode. We're gonna go from normal down to screen. Okay, so screen is actually going to take away the dark parts of the images and only leave the light parts. So let's go ahead and crop our image. I'm gonna hit C for the crop tool. We're just gonna go ahead and crop this right into our final image. There we go. And take a look at this. Literally all I did is just change this from a normal blend mode to a screen blend mode and all of a sudden you can add fire. Now you can see the outlines just a little bit. You can see little line right here where the background isn't quite dark enough. So we see a little bit of the background. That's not a big deal. Hit Control or Command L for levels and then just simply make your darks a little bit darker and you can see how that background starts to disappear. There we go, right there looks good. Now we're gonna hit Control or Command T for transform and just go ahead and transform it down to about where we want it and just start playing around from here. Now you can just do this with a few different files and kind of combine different fires together. And as we can see, we've got what now looks like some realistic fire coming from the book. All we have to do is create a layer mask and then I'm just gonna paint black on my layer mask here. There we go. We're just painting black where we don't want the fire to show up. We don't want this dude's hand on fire. There we go. Just kind of paint away where you don't want the fire. And already we're looking pretty good. Now I wanna add a little bit more, so let's just go ahead and add another one of these layers together, okay? Let's see, maybe I'm gonna use this Fire 04. I like this one. Controller Command T for transform. We'll just make this nice and small. And you can see this is just a screen blend mode. Now, I just wanna add this fire. Let's make it a little bit smaller uh, so I can have a little bit more uh, like density of the fire right near the book itself. Okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and add a layer mask to that. And I'm gonna hit Controller Command I to invert that layer mask. It's just gonna make it completely invisible. There we go. And this just allows me to add a little bit more fire. And this is kind of the fun thing is you can just kind of like add and remove fire as you want to. Now, my suggestion with this fire, fire has shape, right? So when you're painting this sort of thing, visible and invisible, you don't wanna just like have it fade away or something like that. That's never going to look realistic. You wanna make sure you find an edge. Let's say we wanted our fire to end there. You wanna make sure you find an edge and have your fire disappear on that edge it's gonna look a lot more realistic because fire always has a defined shape. That's super, super important in order to make look, this look real. All right, so just paint black on your layer masks exactly where you want the fire to be hidden. There we go. So you can see we're just painting it away from these areas. Now, this looks pretty good to start with, but I do need a little bit more detail in here. I actually just need a little bit more light. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a new layer on top of this. I'm gonna hit B for my brush tool and then sample one of these colors from the fire. You can see I'm just sampling like an orange color here, okay? Now with my standard brush tool, I can just paint orange over here, but if I change my blend mode from normal down here to color dodge, there we go, you can see that area that I just painted with orange then kind of looks like fire. If it's too much, like if it's on that person's face, you can just lower the visibility of that layer. But here we can start to add some glow to these areas, okay? And you can see I just kind of painted with that 
brush really pretty haphazardly. So let's go ahead and hit Control or Command A to select all. I'm gonna hit the delete key and we're just gonna paint it in with a little bit more intention. So there we go, just painting it so it's a little bit brighter here towards the book, a little bit more fire of effect, you know, like towards the base of the fire. There we go. And we can even go ahead and start painting this like around the light source. There we go. So we have the light kind of like defining the edge of our subject a little bit. Now, if you don't have a picture with a light source already in it, you can most definitely do this yourself, but you'll kind of have to paint the light yourself. So if that's what you're interested, I suggest our how to create a glow effect tutorial. We'll go ahead and link to it right here. It basically shows you everything you need to know on how to paint light in a photograph. But for my recommendation to make this realistic, I always recommend starting with a photo that actually has a light source. So the next thing we got, I think it's already looking pretty good. We have this other bit of fire. This is kind of just like sparks and things like that. Let's go ahead and add this. We're going to hit Control or Command T. Just go ahead and make this a bit smaller. There we go. Something like that looks good. And then again, the background's too light, right? So Control or Command L for our levels. And then we're just going to take our darks you can see here, and we're just going to bring them up. And as I do this, you can see that background just starts to disappear. Because we're using screen blend mode, basically it makes the light areas visible and the dark areas invisible. There we go. You can even kind of transform this. I'm going to hold Control or Command and grab that corner and kind of transform this in that direction to make it actually look like it's kind of coming from the fire source itself. There we go. That's looking pretty good there. And then, of course, you know, this is a telltale sign of a composite when everything just kind of like gets cut off at the top right there. So we'll want to make sure we add a layer mask and then just paint black with our layer mask and just kind of cut these off ourselves, right? You don't want it to look like uh, you have a hard line at the end of your photograph. That's just a, that's a dead, dead giveaway that you've got a composite there. All right, so just kind of painting this stuff off there. And then I'm going to hit Control or Command T. Let's just bring our center point right down there and just make this a little bit smaller. There we go. And just go ahead and paint more of this away. And we are looking pretty dang good. So then I'm just going to go kind of back through these and see any areas that like don't really look realistic or, you know, don't serve the photograph that well and just kind of paint them away. And we can just kind of turn all these sources on and off. We're going to do just a little bit more. I'm going to create a new layer. We're going to just grab this sample color and I'm going to change my layer blend mode from normal down to soft light. There we go. We're just going to add a little bit of this glow here. There we go. Let's grab that orange color as well to grab a orange glow. There we go. That's looking really, really nice. Okay. And our effect is almost done. There we go. A little soft light. Nah, let's try overlay. Nah, that's a little bit too much. See, going through these different blend modes, you can find something that's going to work for you. All right. I think soft light's okay. Maybe we'll just make it a little bit less visible. There we go. Let's go ahead and group all of those together and take a look at our before and our after. Here's our image before and the after. So the big things here are find an image that has a light source in it already. If you're taking your own photograph, that's a perfect opportunity to do so. If you want to paint your own light, you can do that. Follow our glow effect tutorial that's right down below. And then just find images of fire. I like pexels. Dot com. That's where we got these stock photos. And then you can just composite those fiber photos in and you're good to go. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Hit that subscribe button and we'll send you a free tutorial every single week. Thanks again. I'll flirt you later. Bye everyone.